Welcome car audio enthusiasts. Today I have the great pleasure of talking to Jim Soltas in Loud BM, this beautiful 5 Series BMW. Stay tuned. All right. Well, g'day, Jim. Welcome, mate. Nice to meet you. Thanks, Greg. Nice to meet you, too. Finally. I've, I've admired your car a lot on uh, Instagram, I think. I've seen a few variations of this beautiful BMW. Yeah, definitely. It's definitely evolved um, in its time um, over the last eight years or so. So I'm in the real estate game. I've um, been in the real estate game for about eight years or so, and um, which has helped me out to build this um, beautiful car. And um, so basically, here we are. Commercial or domestic real estate? Or do uh, you commercial, own? commercial real estate is um, what I'm prominent at, but I have dabbled in um, residential real estate as well. A lot of our clients definitely have residential property as well as commercial, so um, I try and help them all out and try and um, you know, sell their residential property as well. And this is the daily drive between uh, seeing customers. And this this was my daily drive at one stage. Um, now I'm too uh, actually frightened to um, leave it anywhere. <laughs> yeah, I can see <laughs> and, um, So basically when I do park it, it's right next to me, yeah. beside me, or um, I get my colleagues to go, have a look for the window and see yeah. if it's there. Check the car, check <laughs> yeah, the car. Exactly. I, I think so, I've been through that before. But it, no, I've purchased myself uh, another 5 Series, which is the latest model. So I've had that now for a year. I really love my 5 Series BMWs. Um, I've had uh, numerous um, BMWs, so I've had a 6 Series 635, which is a classic 86 model. I let, I let that go too cheap <laughs> at the time. I don't know why, but I, I did. And um, now it's virtually tripled in value. And um, I've also had the 3 Series convertible, which I flipped recently. Yeah, it's just my passion of BMWs, I suppose. So the BMW passion's there. Why car audio? That's the question I okay. always like to ask people. Now, why car audio? My car audio started in when I was in my teens. Okay. So basically, my father was a, a Sparky, and um, he built me he built me this um, boombox, oh. and um, basically put his uh, I think it was a Clarion um, head unit in it, and put a um, transformer or a, whatever converter to um, 240 volt. So. Basically, built some custom speakers, and um, this used to have in my room, and then crank it up, and until the neighbours started, um, yeah, knocking on the door and saying, "Hey, you know, turn it down." And um, then got to my you know, got my license, and um, basically, I started hanging around with a, a mate of mine who bought a three series BMW at the time, and he had a, a Kenwood um, system in it, and we used to just go cruising around, and basically, I just loved it then, you know. Nothing's changed. No. <laughs> what did you have in the... Uh... I had, um, I basically had the Alpine um, set up. I had the, the old, um, the old uh, 3553s and the 3557s, whatever it is. Can't remember the exact models, it's been that long ago. And um, virtually had the, I think it was one of the Alpine status units or something and um, head units. And um, earthquake um, subs at the back and when you to crank them, you know, you just feel the breeze in the back of your neck and this is great. So you've stuck yeah. with the Alpine theme. I've noticed you, uh, we spoke previously, you've always had Alpine. It seems to be the... Look, the Alpine seems thing. to be, been pretty good as a, um, for the amps and also the head units. And um, obviously they've bought out the processors and so on and um, a few other goodies. I sort of stayed away from the the Alpine speakers, mm. and um, so I used to used to be persuaded into the Pioneer um, speakers. I don't know why, mm. but back back in the early days, they used to love the six by nines, and I always thought that the sound comes from the rear. Mm. Until um, I met um, Sam and Brett from Fat Audio, which they said, "Have you ever been to a concert?" I said, "Yeah." They go, where's the stage? They go, at the front. 
so that's what your speaker should be. <laughs> you shouldn't really have risk. Absolutely. I remember so, we, we all started with six by nines on the parcel shelf somewhere exactly. in our lives, I'm sure of it. Yeah. I'd love to replicate the VHS LE um, system, mm -hmm. but okay. you just can't. So, well, we do have a whole bunch of old stock there. We can have a rummage through it later and <laughs> have a look at what we've got. But tell me a bit more about the music. You clearly like music. I'm looking at Focal Brilliant speakers up front, which take a small mortgage to purchase. Definitely. Um, and, and they do sound beautiful. So you're obviously a big fan of, of the music. And, and that's, that's been a driver, I'm presuming, for, for getting in your car. You want to listen to music when you drive. Um, look, I'm the type of person that um, doesn't like to go down the bottom. I like all top quality stuff. Mm. And um, I'll give you a perfect example is we're looking at a hi-fi um, unit for the house. And um, a guy started showing us a setup that was worth something like $24,000 back in the 80s. And um, so we were there looking to buy something around the two to five grand range and we had to walk away, me and my dad, because he started off at the top 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 end instead of starting at the bottom end and working himself up. Mm. So we got confused. Mm. <laughs> and um, so basically I like to stick to the top or the or the you know, second um, down. So I don't like to dabble in the bottom of the range because it's not worth it. You're going to change it anyway. Yeah, well that's right. I think most people they they get what they can they can they can they attain what they can afford, and then after a few months, a year, it's like hmm, I might just go the next step, and then the well, next step, and then the next step. I mean, when when I went when I finished when when I went to see Sam, I started with Hertz Millais, you know. Mm. And they were great loud sounding speakers. Mm. And they weren't cheap either, they were like, you know. Just a couple of grand where they were and um, at the time. And uh, basically, yeah, grow up. I just wanted something more finesse. Yep. And yep. Um, that's a lot of people don't like vocal. They feel that they're not loud and but they're not meant to be loud. They're meant mm. to, I like the clean note. It's the detail. Yeah, you know, if you hear a pin dropping, you hear it. Mm -hmm. And that's what I like. I totally understand. Yep. So instead of Instead of that raw power, but um, you actually think you're driving this car out of here this, uh, this afternoon. Mate. <laughs> <laughs> it might be minus a few speakers. It's beautiful. So okay, so just let's just walk very briefly through the system. Um, okay, we've got a set of Brilliant. They look like a, is it a three or a four inch and a tweet up front? Is that a two and a half inch? No, it's a. I think it's a one. Yeah, one. A one inch and tweet. a three. And a three inch mid range. And there's six, six in the doors. So okay, your tweet is a off axis, mids are kind of on axis, and then in your doors. We've actually changed, we actually, we actually changed the A pillars just yeah. recently. Um, they were more to your face, mm -hmm. so we put them more into um, more squarer. Mm -hmm. So um, we feel that uh, you get a better um, sound um, mm -hmm. quality that way. Yep. Um, we also changed the doors as well. So basically we had its own um, chamber one of the woofers and mm -hmm. the other woofers into the door. Mm -hmm. So now they're both into the door. Mm -hmm. So we've got rid of that. And they're six and a half inch. Six and a half, yeah. yeah. All focal, again. All focal with topias, yep. And then the boot, which is like a work of art, which is, that's what I love about car audio. It's <laughs> that, it's, uh, and I, I, I really have a passion for that, is it's not just the sound, but it's the it's the layout. It has to have that beautiful well, one, layout, one, of the, yeah. one of the stories with, with my um, boot layout is, I had a 22 inch um, screen. And um, every time I went to a car meet, and it was like nationals or um, summer nats, something would happen to the screen mm. where it wouldn't power on or or it pixelated, and um, yeah, because the strips, the LED strips had, had um, come loose. And um, I go, oh, well, I've blown it now, you know, I'm not going to get any points for a show and, um, and so on. And you still end up winning. <laughs> So they're all PDX amps in the back? They are PDX. Yeah, they're the, what are they, M12s or M12s or something, or F6s and F M12s, is that right? Yeah, so the M6s and, um, oh, sorry, F F6s and uh, M12s, so there's eight of them. Uh, the left arm drives the left-hand side, yep. and the right runs yep. the right-hand side. Understood. So you know, there's no switching in the inside? No, there. no. And you, there's a time correction in this, is that a KTX processor I saw, or was it, do you know what No, 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 it's the, it's the Alpine, um, H800. Um, Aha, okay, yeah, I'm with you. So um, I had a look at all the other processors, but mm. the, I actually um, went with a H800. Um, I didn't go with the, 
with the other brands that most of the other um, guys were going with. Mm. I think I used the, uh, the PXAH600, which was the first time correction process that Alpine brought in in the late 90s. Um, and I, I loved it because it made tuning a heck of a lot easier at the time. But then I knew nothing about tuning and then I just hold yeah, the same. microphone up and away we went. And the four Phoenix Gold subs. Okay, yeah. so I used to have the TI2s mm -hmm. um, until they started to get a bit um, old and um, not thumping as hard. So um, I started actually, uh, when I was going on the SPL meter, I started um, actually losing numbers then um, then gaining numbers. So then um, we went with the TI3s and um, they're just running in at the moment. Well, virtually everything's running in. Mm. Um, these are still running in and um, the subs are running in. And um, basically we've, we've done some sort of measurements and um, I think the best I ever did with the TI2s was 141 in um, SPL comp mm. and um, now I'm pushing at about um, one, 144 wow. at about um, 22 hertz believe wow. it or not <laughs> that's <laughs> so uh, I don't know how I'm getting so, so for low an numbers SQ car. yeah for an SQ car that is quite remarkable so um, really I good. think that I think we put a post up on um, on Facebook and a lot of SPL, SPL guys are commenting saying how the hell you're yeah. getting those figures, yeah. you know? <laughs> well, every car is a different acoustic environment. It's all to do with your enclosure, the car's acoustics, but well, that's, that's impressive. Well, the biggest problem is I can't get enough pressure in here. Yeah. Yeah. So what we did was we opened up the, the ski ski hole there, and uh, also my port is um, coming up on the parcel shelf. Mm -hmm. But um, definitely got more um, pressure in there. So the question's a bit sensitive. I always like to ask people, there you go. how much? How much does it cost? Look, um, I'll be honest, uh, I spent a lot of money um, with Gary's Car Radio early on in life and um, I was satisfied at the time and then um, you go and improve and um, different people work there but basically in a nutshell I met Sam and Brett and I had a, a $5,000 budget. How did that go for you? Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, was, it didn't last long. No, right? I didn't say that. I think, yeah, I think it was probably just a, a week's um, week's yeah. worth of um, labour and um, parts, I think, yeah. Yeah. if that. And um, so basically, the good good timing was, um, I was with the Commonwealth Bank at the time, and we all got a redundancy. So I walked out with my redundancy, and um, I bought the 635 to um, run around because I didn't have a daily car at that stage, because this car was... At, um, at Fat Audios, and um, so basically, I'll tell you the truth, probably 100, mm. probably 80, mm -hmm. you know, parts and labour and so on. See how I didn't blink, or did you notice it's that? It's easily, it's easily. Because it just goes, yeah. yeah, I get it, yeah. And then if you yeah. start including the, 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 the paint and mm -hmm. uh, the big wheels and the big brakes, and you're looking upwards of 150, 200, mm -hmm. thereabouts, and it's gone. Mm. So, um, all of a sudden, I'm sitting on my backside at home, you know, enjoying my redundancy money and um, then you start paying for the car audio and your passion <laughs> of, um, you know, cars and <laughs> well, see the bank balance just going, yeah, yeah. you know, but I'm not complaining. No, that's, you've, you've done very well, I mean, it sounds so, wonderful. I mean, it always puts a smile to my face when I, yeah. when I go in this car and um, I think I, I pissed off a lot of people uh, at the cops because, you know, it's just cleaning up every time, you know, sort of thing. And, no one will turn up. So before you were at Fat Audio, did you go through any moments in your journey of trying to find the, the car audio system that suits you? Do you go any sort of the worst moment syndrome, syndrome where you've, you've had a bad experience? Yeah, definitely. Tell me about that. Definitely. Um, well, basically the, the radio um, shop in Preston had, had um, closed down and um, had moved it to their um, Heidelberg um, shop at the time and um, a lot of different people, different trades people, you know, a lot of them didn't, didn't go across. So the amount of work that they did on my car was, if you see earlier pictures, um, mm. which I can show you, you see the door pods and the way they did them and um, they'll be hitting your legs while you're driving and um, not to mention all, all the all the wiring um, behind the behind the scenes, you know, 
it was destined to cause a fire somewhere. So that was, that was probably one of my um, low um, episode in um, car audio. So that's why I went and looked for the next person that's going to help me to um, overcome all this. And um, so I started looking on um, Google and um, reading people's comments about different um, mm. different shops and so on. And um, what I did was um, I took some long service leave and um, drove around to all these shops and um, see the people and um, see what they can offer and um, and so on. And um, I automatically become attached to uh, Fat Audio, mm -hmm. which um, the first couple of occasions they were so busy doing demo cars and so on that they couldn't really bring in my car. But at the time when I went when I met them, um, they saw it and um, they heard the car and okay, yeah, he needs <laughs> needs work. You need, you need a doctor. Yeah, you need yeah. a doctor. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and um, it wasn't until they actually um, got it in, but just before that, I mean. Um, I'm the type of person that will will give will try once or twice, mm -hmm. and if you feel like you're being rejected, you won't go the third time. Mm -hmm. But I persevered with them, and um, we finally got there. And um, and like you said, yeah. You know. All right. So going back to those days where you wanted to mention before you want to try and replicate, if you had one thing you would love to replicate that car, was it a VH? Did you say? VHSLE. VHSLE. Yeah. So going back to that time where you wanted to replicate the VHSLE, talking about earthquake. What's that iconic piece of equipment that you remember or would, would love to have these days that you, you had in the past? What's that one piece of kit? Um, it'll have to be the subs, actually. There you go. Earthquake yeah. all day. Yeah, <laughs> it'll have to be the subs. What brand? Do you remember what model they were? No, they had the, I remember they had the red um, red logo on the, on yep. the thing, but I can't remember the exact yep. model. I'll go and dig out some earthquake subs afterwards and see if you can you can just point at which one it is. Yeah, they, they weren't they weren't cheap. They weren't cheap. Yeah. Um, I think they were around the three fifty to seven hundred back in the back in the days. Yeah. So I don't know if that was the expensive or um, well, or if, cheap. But if you look up there, there's a pallet of HP fifteens up there. I suspect that that might be those ones got the American flag all over the basket. And, yeah. But anyway, we'll have a look. So, but yeah, definitely the definitely those subs and. I ask so many shops, I go, can I have free-to-air um, subs? They go, no, they're all going to be um, you know, imported boxes or sealed boxes. They go, so what's happened to all these free-to-air subs? You can't get them. Mm. Mm. All right. Um, if there was one piece of advice you had to give through, you've been through quite a few experiences, different cars, lots of upgrades, been in car audio since you're a teenager. Mm. What's that one piece of advice you'd give to someone starting out in the world of car audio these days? A young person comes up to you, what do I do, Jim? What's, look, what do you say to them? Look, basically you have you try and aim for the what your budget is. So um, if your budget is five to ten grand, um, try and achieve the the best sort of equipment that'll suit your car. Um, because eventually at the end of the day, you're gonna buy your utopias or your um, you know your your DIN audios and all that sort of stuff, the good, all the good quality stuff. So don't aim for the good quality stuff if you can't afford it at the beginning. You never know your luck. Mm. So, I mean, I couldn't afford it at the beginning. Mm. Um, so that's why I went with what I did. And uh, for my for my um, advantage was the redundancy helped. Mm. And I'm a single bloke, so um, you know I didn't have any dependents or anything like that to to um, you know or a mortgage at that time to to worry about it. And uh, well, I did have a mortgage, but it wasn't wasn't uh, that much. So stick to a budget, work within your budget. That's right, and um, things will come. Mm. And um, so that's my advice. I mean, um, it's probably not the correct advice, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> sounds good to me. Yeah, it worked for me. That's it. Well, let's have a listen to this system, if you don't mind. If we can just, I'm yeah, been, definitely. I've been um, dying to hear it, mate. So I think it's a little bit of a Dell. That's beautiful. Um, yeah, I feel really privileged to finally meet you and uh, no, listen same. to this car, Jim. This is great. Uh, I'm sure it'll give you hours of hours of enjoyment. Look, I need I need at least 200 hours just to <laughs> run in the speakers, you know. 
And, well, as um, I said, leave it here for a little while. We'll look after it for you, <laughs> right? I'll drive it up and down the hill a few times. <laughs> so what I do is basically um, is I've got a four car garage at home and um, just lock in there, put it on the charger and um, and that's it. And um, what I should do is um, just leave the radio on and um, mm. let it run in mm. while I'm working away. <laughs> All right, well, listen, it's been an absolute pleasure <laughs> no, to meet thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming in, mate. No problem. Thanks, thanks for having me.